Hello and welcome back to Woodruff Family Wisdom at pppttime.com. And my name is Rose and welcome back to our channel where we discuss all things that pertain to life and godliness. Because God said above all things, he wished we prosper, be in health, even as our soul prospers. Well, as you can remember, last year we did a five-part series from Your Abilities to Finding for Freedom, where God had given us some foundational principles to do in order to be debt-free. And we had been believing for some time now that Daryl would be able to retire. So after putting all those principles together and being obedient, guess what? Now we're eating the good of the land. Honey has retired and we are completely debt free. And yes, even our home is completely debt free and we are giving God all the glory for that. Because this year we are going to be focusing in on marriage and communication. Because according to the 2021 statistics about marriage and divorce, the number one reason for divorce now is communication. So you're probably saying, Russ, what do y'all know about marriage and communication? Well, let me tell y'all. As of February the 17th, 2022, Daryl and I will be married 37 years, four children later. So we know a little bit of something about marriage, okay? But not only that, we were premarital and marital facilitators for a mega church here in the Metroplex for years. So we have a lot of experience with dealing with couples and not to mention a little something about a uh, life coach certification. So this year we are going to endeavor to, yes, right here on our YouTube channel, make available and on our website at pppttime.com, make available all the information that we know about marriage and communication. So we can help us have better relationships, not only with our spouses, but with coworkers, with our children, with our relatives, and things of that nature, okay? So don't forget to like, subscribe, click that bell so you'll know when we are going to release the next video on marriage and communication, or just say relationship, okay? and you'll get all the information that we will be sharing this year, okay? So, again, like, subscribe, and click that bell. We're gonna be setting the foundation how to become better communicators. God bless, stay tuned. Reason for divorce today is conflict and arguments, which is? The lack of communication skills. The lack of communication skills. Everything that you said. Right. So I think the thing that happens is when people go into marriage, they don't think to build the excellence in or to build that foundation. I'm going to let you talk about that here in a minute, because I'm just thinking about even us on last year. You know, we've been believing God to be debt free, we've been believing God for you to retire uh, for so many years. And then but last year, God really prompted us and really put his foot down on us, setting a foundation. So, but as we begin to receive setting that foundation and start implementing the, the things that he told us to do for our foundation, okay, it was like six months or seven months later, you were retired and we were debt free. Right. So I'm just saying that to say this, that if you receive setting a foundation for your relationship, how quickly can your relationship get better, begin to flourish? And you know, one of our very popular sayings that we always say, things get better and better to best. To best. So as we share a little bit of what uh, communication, that you things I feel like you should know, I think your relationship and you set them as a foundation, you'll get better and better to best. So what do you think about foundation, honey? Uh, some of the things that should have been built in before the relationship said I do. Well, one of the things that you have to have is you have to be whole in your relationship with God. I, I feel like if you don't understand how much God loves you, then you won't afford that same grace in your relationship. You know, because you're heirs together of the grace of God. Mm -hmm. And so both parties need to understand God's grace. If God has been so gracious to us to have forgiven us 
then we can allow the love of God in our hearts to forgive and cover each other's sins. Mm -hmm. So, first of all, that gives us that blanket to even go and work on that and that mercy and that mm -hmm. grace to to confront. Right. So, first of all, we should know the love of God, how God loved us. Yeah. As, 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 as the uh, script says, He forgives us our debts and sins, and as we, we forgive, forgive others. others. Right. You can't forgive others if you don't truly understand how much he forgave you because if you if you're not thinking about that then you can I mean if you just would think about how God if he was to bring up everything that you've done every time you have a conversation with him, that Always would be a your great childhood right that would not right. be a great relationship it with really God would. right it really would. And it's not a great relationship with one another if we continue to address negatively everything that we've been through mm -hmm. and we didn't have a way of bringing a resolution, resolution. Right. and I'm just gonna put this little pin in this uh, as far as what forgiveness really is because forgiveness is not forgetting because the brain is not gonna let you forget right. but forgiveness is not continuing to punish that person for what they've done so if you're continually bringing it up, or if you're still responding to that negativity, that means you did not totally forgive. Right. So I think another thing when we talked about foundation two, I think it's the very one of the first things that they say in the marital ceremony, and, and they always say not to enter into it unadvised, unadvisedly, right, right, but and, reverently, reverently. Right. Basically saying deliberately, and where there's some thought that should go around it. It's one of the biggest decisions that you're making in your life. Right? And I heard, I read one uh, passage where it says the second largest decision that you will make in your life, next to salvation. And how great is that? Marriage is right up there with you going to heaven. I mean, marriage is so awesome that God would even use it in the relationship that He talked about with us. Right. Right. We're His bride. Exactly. So, and so he was the perfect example of how to love your spouse and that was to be selfless and giving your life for them. Exactly. So first foundational principle is to understand that grace, right? If we're going to be heirs of something together, then we both got to understand it. And you see a lot of relationships act as if there's no grace to it. Right. Right. There's no uh, unmerited favor. And, and a lot of times that favor is not being released because of the way that man is treating his wife. Um, he said, he that findeth the wife, findeth good, a good thing, and obtained favor of the Lord. Now, grace is God's unmerited favor. So there's a level of favor that, that's released just in marrying that good thing. So I would say, number one, we don't really have this in no chronological order. But for sure, number one is you need to know what forgiveness really is. Because I guarantee you, you're going to have to forgive somebody in no, your relationship. That's yeah. the number one thing you're going to have to do is forgive somebody. Yeah, you have to forgive and, just mm -hmm. in growth alone because of the ignorance of what you don't know. Right. And and, and as you go to different phases, like mm -hmm. we went through our phase and then uh, the, the ch having the children. Mm -hmm. You know, and so you just, right. that personal age and situation, as you right. said, right? So let's look at, before you enter to marriage, you need to understand forgiveness and also understand that and be willing to forgive because there is going to be some times you're going to have to forgive but number two you definitely do not want to enter into that that union or that covenant unadvisedly right right so you need to know what marriage consists of what marriage is all about like we talked about the perfect example was christ and the church because we the church is his bride and he shows us his undying love for the church by giving his life for him. He gave his life for the church. For the church. And so you got to be willing to be selfless. Sometimes you've got to go ahead and don't look at it as, it may not, sometimes it may not be a win-win. Right. You just may have to just take one for the team, exactly. you know, just to keep the peace. That's right. Well, uh, I think it was Corinthians, First Corinthians chapter 7, that talks about he that is married care for the things of the world how he may please his wife and then vice versa she right. care for the things of the world how she may please mm -hmm. her husband but I tell you what it leaves little to be um, pleased about when he's that 
the individuals are operating in God's grace and favor and love individually. Right. And then we come together. It's that icing on the cake that marriage brings because I know God loved me outside of my relationship with my wife. And she know God loves her outside her relationship with me. And so when she helps me or she plays her role in my life and I play my role in hers, now we add it in our relationship within that grace. So you don't want to do anything to destroy that grace. Oh, true. So what we're going to do today, we just go share a little communication information. And just stick with us. Just like and subscribe. Hit and you'll know, hit bell. the bell. So you'll know next time we put out the next video. Because we are going to share some techniques and some other things for you to think about when it comes to communication. But today, we're just going to show you how the Word of God is parallel with psychology. And share with us how. prerequisite the psychology behind it with a couple of scriptures one of them says that to be ye angry and sin not and uh, you're going to kind of deal with that from a psychological standpoint and another scripture said to be slow to speak but swift to hear right and that's that's absolutely awesome uh, romans chapter 5 talks about hope making not a shame so I believe that when you begin to talk about the psychology of it, it stands to reason of these principles that's in operation because of the way the brain works. Can you talk a little bit about that? Our emotions, which is our fight or flight. First, we analyze information. So if you be quick to speak, you're going to blurt something and then you can't take back. Right. You can say, you can forgive, they can forgive you, but they're not going to forget it, right? So now you got that out in the atmosphere that you're going to be dealing with probably for the rest of your life. When if you just gave it a few minutes and let that information get to the logic of the brain, and then you could have realized this wasn't a fight or a flight situation. You know, you can determine what type of information that was hitting your brain. Right. Nine times out of 10, you heard it wrong anyway. Right. 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 What you thought you heard is not really what was being said or what was being said wasn't really articulated to you in a way where you can hear what exactly what they meant. Right, so that's why you always want to be slow to speak. And remember Dr. Spock talked about counting to 10 or waiting 10 minutes or 10 seconds, you know, the, the child psychologist, right. because he knew how information was processed. But also, we know that, according to statistics, that we speak at 125 words a minute, we but we listen at 500 words a minute. So all while I'm talking, the other person is not really listening. They're, they're going over, they analyze the information at 500 words a minute, just waiting for you to shut up so they can say what they're going to say. So they really did not uh, understand your information. That's why you always got to say, what did you hear me say? Right. You know, so if you start off a conversation with, this is going to be empathic shared meaning. Right. I think that's awesome that you said that. What did you hear me say? Mm -hmm. I think it should be used both ways too. Because right. what I heard you say, right. as well as if they didn't initiate that with what I heard you say was this, you can also use that if you're the one that initiated the conversation. What did you hear me say? And you know what, too, babe? And also, right there when I said, uh, when you be slow to speak, right? If you said something to me, and I said, now I heard, instead of getting angry, yeah. now I heard you say, Blah, 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 blah. Give me a chance to correct it. Right. And you may say, that's not what I said at all. You heard me wrong. Right. So that way I didn't get upset. I gave you opportunity to explain or say what, say it how you, or say what you were trying to say. Mm -hmm. And it was not an argument or a conflict at all. Now, that brings in Romans chapter 5. Because just the mere hope that I would have the opportunity to share with you exactly what I meant. Well, you have the opportunity to share with me exactly what you meant before I could jump to a conclusion. That gives you hope in a man, right there. Right, and I want to, let me look this up. That is, that's awesome. Then the Bible said, hope make it not a shame, because really, without that hope of knowing that there will be resolution and that you will be heard, you might do some shame and dishonor, right? Right, and you know what? And that hope is, what is the scripture about? Not letting the sun go down on your wrath? Let not the sun go down on your wrath. So if you are familiar with not letting the sun go down on your wrath, are not going to be angry, 
if we don't talk about it right now, you will have hope that before we go to bed tonight, we're going to try to resolve this issue. So God done gave us to be slow to speak, that timing is relevant to, to not blurt out right away, but to have hope that before the night ends, right. we will address it. But according to psychology, that's plenty of time for right. logic to kick, kick in. in. But I want to bring this point too with the psychology where it says, don't let the sun go down on your wrath. Because of another word that's coined, negativity bias. And negativity bias is our brains are wired to scout for the bad stuff mm -hmm. and fixate on the threat, right? Mm -hmm. So that means if it's fixating on it, guess what? It's stuck on it. Right. So if you don't get it resolved tonight or even try to... Uh, do something about it tonight, your brain is going to fix it. It's marinating. It. It's marinating overnight. <laughs> Instead so of you it's, meditating on the word day and night, you meditating on the next. <laughs> it's, it's looking at whatever that was as a threat. Right. And you remember that your brain is wired mm -hmm. to not only scout out the bad stuff, but to fixate on it. So, so you got to deal with it before the sun go down. So you naturally built. I know one of the scriptures say that the the natural man is enmity against God. Mm -hmm. It's like it's contrary to God's way altogether. Mm -hmm. So the love of God says, wait a minute, I'm going to be slow to speak because I know mm -hmm. that the way human nature is built is scouting out the negative. Mm -hmm. We used to say, take the high road. Mm -hmm. right? So always assume goodwill. Good and that's even without the communication. But a lot of times, if you listen to what someone's saying, and they're really trying to get over to you to understand how they feel and what they're trying to communicate. Once that logic kick in and they slow to speak, you, and you slow to speak and swift to hear and really hear me to understand right. where that person comes from, they mean you goodwill. I mean, you didn't marry somebody that had your best, that, that did not have your best interest at heart. Right. right. So that's absolutely awesome. Right. So we're going to go back and talk about. We're going to set that foundation. Mm -hmm. We're going to understand how, much God how is. forgiveness. Just right. know when you go into a relationship, you're going to forgive somebody at some point. The grace of forgiveness. Right. And you're not going to keep beating them up for what they did. That just means that's what forgiveness is all about. You're going to know God's love and what marriage, what marriage is about. It's, it's about selflessness. We're going to understand communication, how communication works. That all information goes to the logic brain before it goes to the I mean, it goes to the emotional brain before it goes to the logic brain. But that's why the scripture says, be sw slow to speak, but be swift yeah. to understand. Stand. And we're not going to let the sun go down on our raft, right? i tell you what, it works in everything, right? Don't you hate when someone trying to sell you something, but they had not heard what you really want? Right. It's significant, if you're going to be successful, even in sales, to listen to the desire and the want and the need of the person you're trying to sell right. something to. You might not even have what they need. You right. might not even have what they want, but you might can direct them to someone right. who has it or another product line that you may have, but you have to listen. Right. So today we just wanted to share that little bit of information about communication. And like I said again, we ask you to like and subscribe and ring the bell because we're going to come back with some more videos concerning communication. Because when we looked at the statistics, of course, we're going to say it again, studies have shown that the three most common reasons is conflict and arguing, irretrievable breakdown in the relationship, uh, infidelity, a lack of physical intimacy, right? So those are the other things that, they, that statistics are showing for the reasons for divorce. But don't let communication be the reason why you are getting a divorce. So, like and subscribe, hit that notification bell, and we will be coming back with some more information concerning communication and making your good thing better and better to best. And remember, remember that you are happy, healthy, wealthy, wealthy fit, and forgiven. forgiven. God, God bless. bless.